I'm here again with Lion Polk, who is a managing director with Morgan Stanley's Wealth Management Group and head of Polk Wealth Management. And Lion, cannot thank you enough for your time. Really, really appreciate it. A lot of people choose to go out and run their businesses on their own and have their own practice, but you're you know, working here at Morgan Stanley. You've got an incredible team here. Tell us a little bit about what that dynamic's like. Well, so I, when I started the team in the late 90s, the two of the partners I started with in 2007 wanted to go independent. And so they ended up going independent and I stayed here. And um, they've obviously done, they've done very well in the, uh, being independent, but the reasons that I stayed inside of a big organization um, is one, I want to have the balance sheet of a large firm behind me with all the movement of money that we have to make sure that the co clients feel very comfortable, um, uh, that their assets are safe, and also that if anything goes wrong, there's a, there's, uh, a firm behind them, a large firm with a big balance sheet. Second of all, um, just the due diligence that we're able to do. There's 200 people, I think, in due diligence here for managers. Um, and. You know that's larger than most independent firms that are out there. So just really being able to do the work, scrub these um, investments that we're making to make sure that we feel comfortable and our clients feel comfortable with what we're doing, uh, what we're investing in, and then um, and then third, because of the size of, of, that we are and the user of, of investment manager products, we're really able to, as a firm, squeeze down the pricing. So if there's best pricing out there, in most cases we're going to get it because we're sitting inside of a large firm. And um, Morgan Stanley is unique also in the way that they really let us run our own business. Mm -hmm. They say to us, here are the guidelines and we, we have the oversight of their compliance and the rules that the firm puts in place. Um, but they let us run our own business the way, the way we want to. So we, we feel ourselves that we are an independent investment advisory sitting inside of you know, the best financial institution on the street. Well, I think that if there was a little more oversight of the rest of the industry, the way you're getting the oversight from Morgan Stanley, we might, might have been in a little better, better, better shape. <laughs> um, you've also talked a little bit about um, the fact that your clients are, while you have you know, traditional products, you're seeing a, putting people more into alternative investments. First of all, I think um, just where we are in this market cycle, having a larger allocation to hedge funds uh, is something we've been recommending to clients, even though the asset class has underperformed for, as, as an index for the last five years. But considering what our firm's expectation is on annualized returns for fixed income over the next couple of years, it's very low. Um, the expectations on equity returns are also very low, but they have a much larger uh, volatility. And so our view is if we can get something similar to equity returns with, you know, a third of the volatility in hedge funds, that's why we're putting, we think it's the right point in the cycle to have more money into hedge funds. Historically, also, when you get into a rising rate environment, um, good stock pickers are really able to differentiate themselves. And so we think it's a good time for that. In terms of... Um, the illiquids, we still feel that we're able to get the illiquidity premium to invest in private investments. So when we invest in private investments, we're really looking for 500 or 1,000 basis points annually over their comparable liquid asset class. And so um, we think in certain cases we're still able to get it. And so we, we have been guiding clients to be thinking about what their illiquidity bucket should be um, you know, hedge funds being, you know, one year and then quarterly from, uh, for the most part, but this is long-term, you know, 10-year kind of illiquid money. And then the other part about that is that on the uh, fixed income space with the disintermediation of the banks, there's a large opportunity or has been um, to go and take the place of banks with direct lending and things like that. And so, you know, investing in funds that do that uh, again, you're looking about lo you're looking at longer term lockups, but you're able to get the yields up to you know seven, eight, nine percent um, if you're invested in the right products. And so, thinking about illiquidity not just in private equity, but also in fixed income. So, what's the total illiquidity bucket for that a client is comfortable with um, is what we guide people to think about. You know, when I look at people like yourself, or if I look at a Chase Coleman or a uh, Paul Tudor Jones or Lewis Bacon or Julian Robertson, uh, you guys are all incredibly successful at managing your businesses, but what you're really, really good at is recruiting, hiring people. What do you look for when you're trying to bring people on board your uh, 
firm. Well, obviously, those are all phenomenal names, and it's uh, it's flattering that you put my name in that it, with, with all of them. But you know, obviously, they they are running you know investment firms versus me. I'm running a wealth management business, so they're obviously looking for for different types of folks. But when I look at wealth management people, because I already have the partners, the senior partners that I think my business needs for the next 10 or 20 years. Um, so I'm really looking to hire that next level down. In the last five years, we have not hired a single person who has not been an intern for us first. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because all these kids coming out of college today are smart. And what I really want to know is, do they fit in the culture? Do they, when you look at the different silos in my business, do, do they have a passion and an interest in one of those areas? Um, and do they fit in the culture? Right. You know, the culture is the most important thing because we all are here long hours, and I want to make sure that everybody gets along, wants to be here, and fits into my culture. What sort of advice? Let's say you're back at school, you know, and you're giving advice to all the young people out there uh, who are trying to figure out what they're going to do with their careers. What sort of advice would you give somebody graduating today? You know, I have young kids. I have a 19-year-old and a 16-year-old, and, and what I see, and also from the, the, uh, the kids that come here from college, um, is they understand how to work together. And I think what has made my industry or my team better is that the, the concept or the ability to really work together. So I think, you know, understanding how to do that and knowing that that's a tremendous advantage for them going forward. I also say uh, that to really find your passion, take your time, and to find the, find the thing that you really like to do. Because I find, especially on my team, the kids that are working on the things that they really like, they tend to do well at and will put in the extra time. What do you do when you're not working? What are some of the things you love to do? Um, spend time with my, my, my girls and my wife, uh, or play sports. Okay. That's and, then, and then other than that, I, I volunteer a lot of my time at my daughter's school. You've done amazing uh, things in terms of giving back and you're very involved with the Big Brothers of New York City. Tell us a little bit about your philosophy there. Right, so I was I got involved with the the uh, Boys Club of New York right when I first got to Wall Street. My father was very involved. My grandmother was very involved. My uncle was head of the board there for a long time, and um, the I thought the thing that I could do most was actually spend time with the kids. So I would uh, for seven years I would spend uh, two afternoons um, a week at the Boys Club on Avenue A and 10th Street, and it was normally you know uh, middle of the week. I would go up there and play basketball with them. I'm not a very, I'm a hockey player, not a basketball player, but I play basketball, ping pong, and really be a big brother to them. And then normally take them out on the weekends, on a Saturday or something, skating or or whatever I could do. And it was, uh, I know it meant a lot to them, but it also meant a, a tremendous amount to me to be able to give back. Yeah. Um, and I really enjoyed that a lot. Um, once I had kids and moved uptown, and my focus changed, and now most of my focus is on my uh, my daughter's school. Well, I got to say that a lot of people give in many different ways. A lot of people give money, but you gave you give money and time. You put in a lot of time, and I'm sure it meant a lot to those kids. Uh, you've done an amazing job uh, with your life, and you're you're incredibly successful. And I wish you continued success. Again, I'm here with Lion Polk, who is a managing director with uh, Morgan Stanley's Wealth Management Group, and Polk Wealth Management. And Lion, cannot thank you enough for your time. Thank you, Steve.